After the high success of Soul Calibur 2, the pressure was on to try to create another sequel game that could surpass its predecessor. Soul Calibur 3 was developed in the span of two years and was released on October 25, 2005, and was only released exclusively on the PlayStation 2, which was kind of surprising considering the previous game was released on multiple platforms. Now honestly, like Soul Calibur 2, Soul Calibur 3 is another game that's chock full of nostalgia for me. Heck, even more than the second game itself. The amount of hours I spent on this game back in the day was ridiculous, but is the game really as good as I remember? Let's find out in my retrospective review for Soul Calibur 3. Now the story in this game picks up right after the events of Soul Calibur 2. Again, like I mentioned in my Soul Calibur 2 review, if I were to explain the whole story, it would make this video longer than it needs to be. So if you're curious, I'll leave a link to the game's prologue in the description box. Seriously though, as far as fighting games go, Soul Calibur has a pretty decent story that's pretty engaging in context, and I highly recommend checking it out. The graphics in this game look freaking amazing, and they really push the limits of the PlayStation 2's hardware. Seriously, it's easily one of the best looking PlayStation 2 games ever made, and that's saying something because the graphics of Soul Calibur 2 looked awesome already. The opening FMV looked incredible, the animation was smooth, and the character models were at their very best in this game. Speaking of which, the character models look amazing! I love how they rendered the characters' faces to look like their respective ethnicities, from Taki, Helik, and Zhang Hua's Asian features, to Siegfried, Sophia, and Cassandra's European features. It was a nice mesh of fantasy with a small hint of realism, and this also translated to the character outfit designs because all of them looked great in this game. In fact, you know what, I'm just gonna say that Soul Calibur 3 had the best art direction in the entire Soul Calibur franchise. Well, at least in my opinion. The game features all the characters from Soul Calibur 2, but an additional three new characters were added to the cast. These new characters consisted of Setsuka, a wandering warrior donning a red kimono who uses the Umbrella Blade style, Tira, a mentally unstable assassin who uses the Ring Blade style, and Zasalamel, a mysterious man who practices dark magic and uses the Scythe style. The new characters were freaking awesome and added in some more unique fighting styles to the game. They naturally fit in with the main cast and I really enjoyed all of them. However, unlike Soul Calibur 2, Soul Calibur 3 didn't have any guest characters this time around. There were rumors that Dante from Devil May Cry was originally going to appear as the guest character for this game, but I wasn't able to find any credible information on that, so I'm sure it was just that, a rumor. The stages in this game were beautiful. If I had to choose my top 5 favorite stages, they'd definitely be the stages for Maxi, Setsuka, Cassandra, Zhang Hua, and Sung Minas. But at the end of the day, all the stages look great and they only exemplify why I think this game had the best art direction. The gameplay is pretty much the same from the last game, so there's really no point in talking about the gameplay mechanics since they're pretty much the same from the previous game. That said, character movesets have been expanded upon a bit more, but are still reasonable and not overwhelming for the player to learn, save for a few attacks, like Ivy's Calamity Symphony. Oh my god, I can never seem to pull this move off, even in the last game. So kudos to the players who can. Seriously though, most of the characters are simple to learn. The top 5 characters I enjoy using the most in this game are Cassandra, Taki, Zasalamel, Ivy, and Tira. But in saying that, all of the characters are fun to play in their own way. Now like the last game, this game is chock full of game modes to keep you entertained. You have Tales of Soul, which is pretty much the story mode of this game, but the cool thing about it is that they made it into an interactive story with quick time events and the option to make choices that affect the outcome of your character's story. This was a pretty cool feature that really immersed me into the game even more. You fight a total of 13 characters, and on the 11th stage, you fight against a character who shares a tie with the character you've chosen. Once you defeat them, you then battle against either Siegfried or Nightmare, and after that, you challenge the final boss Abyss. Abyss used to piss me the fuck off when I was a kid. Seriously. A lot of his moves were pretty overpowered, but after replaying the game, he's actually not as hard as I remember him to be. He's the right amount of challenging, despite a few overpowered moves. And he has a cool design as well. He looks like a badass Grim Reaper. All in all, Abyss is a pretty cool final boss character. In the Soul Arena, you can play through Quick Play Mode, which is pretty much your standard arcade mode, but you can also play Mission Mode. In Mission Mode, you select the character and complete different battle objectives. As you win these challenges, they unlock again with a higher difficulty setting. These challenges were actually quite fun and provided some great replay value. 
However, the one challenge I hated, and I mean hated, was the final boss challenge against Night Terror. Yep, Abyss actually isn't the final boss of this game. Nope, it's Night Terror, and this guy can seriously f*** off. He's overpowered, his attacks take up half the f screen. Just, ugh. I was able to defeat him, but only because I spammed a kick attack from the ninja kunai style. Defeating him won't unlock anything, so he's not a requirement, which is good, because this boss is as overpowered as they come. The practice mode in this game is awesome, because it provides a mode called Tutorial, which is great for beginners who want to learn the ins and outs of the game, as it gives the player a simple step-by-step -step tutorial that teaches you everything you need to know about how the gameplay works. And for the first time in history of Soul Calibur, Character creation made its debut in this game. I've always been a big fan of character creation, so I was beyond excited when I learned that it was going to be included in Soul Calibur 3. And I gotta say, the options were pretty deep for its time, as you're provided with tons of hair, faces, facial features, and clothing to choose from. Seriously, you can make some pretty neat characters. I personally created my own little cast of characters and gave them little backstories. You were able to create a total of 10 characters per memory card, which was pretty reasonable for its time. The only nitpicks I had were how you weren't able to color everything on some of the clothing pieces. It really killed some of the creative juices when it came to color schemes. And lastly, it was annoying how some of the clothing you chose would affect your character's good versus evil alignment. You could try to create a good character, but the clothing you put them in turns them evil. But other than that, character creation was awesome. It was a really good first debut. And along with character creation, you were also able to edit the colors of the main characters as well. And the last new mode in this game was Chronicles of the Sword. In this mode, you created a character and embarked on an adventure that played like a strategy game similar to that of the Fire Emblem games. You traversed on a map and the fights were resolved in traditional Soul Calibur style matches. As you fought against opponents, your characters would gain experience and level up which would make them even more effective in battle. The story isn't anything to write home about, and it's very predictable. But you can tell that they put lots of work into it, and I'm glad that they did, as it was quite the fun experience, and I loved how they let your character be featured in the in-game cutscenes. The music in this game is amazing, and the soundtrack for this game is my second favorite right after the soundtrack for Soul Calibur 1. The music was composed by Junichi Nakasuru, who composed all the music from the other Soul Calibur games, and he's easily in my list of top 10 favorite video game composers. If I had to pick 5 songs from the game that I really really liked, they definitely be the themes for Setsuka, Tira, Taki, Yoshimitsu, and Raphael. But take it from me folks, the whole soundtrack is amazing! Now there are quite a few things you're able to unlock in this game. For starters, while the game gives you 18 playable characters from the start, you're able to unlock an additional 7 more characters. But that's not all, as you can also unlock an additional 17 bonus characters. That's right, 17! Which was insane for its time! Okay, to be fair, with the exception of Huang and Li Long, two veteran characters who made their debut in Soul Blade, and Raphael's adoptive daughter Amy, the rest of the characters were pretty meh, as they consisted of characters from Chronicles of the Sword, and were pretty uninteresting for the most part. You could also unlock other things like a nice amount of concept art, the exhibition theater, character profiles, and the event theater which you can buy in the shop with the gold you win in battles. All in all, the unlockable content in this game was out freaking standing. Now if I had to nitpick a few things about this game, for one, while the gameplay is decently paced, it feels a bit slower compared to Soul Calibur 2, and because of this, it really made the gameplay feel less dynamic in some areas. And lastly, while this one is more of a personal thing, I didn't like how they changed Ivy's moveset and removed her stances from Soul Calibur 2. I mean, I was still able to adjust to her new playstyle, but I really wish they kept her different stances from Soul Calibur 2, because they really added that extra oomph to her moveset. Overall, Soul Calibur 3 was an enjoyable game. When I first played the game back when it first came out, I was hooked on it for a long time. There was just so much to do. The graphics were amazing, the music was beautiful, the game had tons of replay value, and the character creation was pretty deep for its time. And while the game had a few issues, they didn't affect the overall game as a whole, and I had a blast replaying this game. That all said, Soul Calibur 3 gets 9 out of 10. The only thing keeping me from giving this game a 10 was the lack of the gameplay speed that was present in Soul Calibur 2. But nevertheless, it still was a good follow-up, 
and it's still one of my all-time favorite fighting games ever made. Soul Calibur 3 proved to be another successful title, but it was time to say goodbye to the PlayStation 2 and move on to the PlayStation 3. Project Soul soon began work on Soul Calibur 4, and it was released three years later in 2008. Was Soul Calibur 4 just as good as Soul Calibur 3? Be sure to join me next time when I take a look at Soul Calibur 4, coming soon. Hey there guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more gaming goodness coming soon. I'm Decadent Gamer, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.